This is Jacob Elordi, born June 26, 1997, Brisbane, Australia, made Down Under. Remember when Heath Ledger played the Joker and slammed a pencil into that dude's eye? Jacob saw that and thought, boom, that's it. I'm going to be an actor. Not shocking when you see the roles that attract him. I remember watching Heath Ledger and when he's like, how about a magic trick? And he slammed that guy's head into the pencil and the pencil disappeared. I was like, that's what I want to do. Whatever that is, that's what I want to do. Later on in his career, Heath's dad would present him with an award for Actor of the Year at the 2019 GQ Australia Man of the Year Awards. A mouthful, forgive me, but that's honestly iconic. GQ's TV Actor of the Year, Jacob Elordi. I have this uh, poster of Heath that I take with me everywhere and I put it up in my hotel room or it's in my apartment right now and I make everyone that comes into my house sort of give him a, a fist bump and say g'day to him. Uh, your son to me is uh, kind of feels like a like a, a, a good guiding beacon when it gets a little bit too hard. And without words, you know, to, to be able to shake your hand and stand here and hold this. He started in the theater as a child and played the cat in the hat in Seussical as a teen. Not quite the dark night, but we all gotta start somewhere, right? You grew up doing <laughs> My stuff? first role ever was a, was a musical, and I played the cat in the hat in Seussical the musical. Yes! So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right now. Just so proud. He moved to LA at 19 after the Kissing Booth movie in 2018. He lived in his car with $800 in his account until he landed Euphoria. A parked 2004 Mitsubishi on Maholland Drive was his home until a producer from Euphoria put him in a hotel during filming. Now, he lives right behind the Hollywood sign. I would look down, sort of over Hollywood and over the hills here, and I'd see these houses and I'd be like, man, <laughs> who lives there? Like, who lives underneath the Hollywood sign? Alexa Demi, AKA Maddie Perez, saw him auditioning and just knew he'd get the part. Jacob's middle name also happens to be Nathaniel. Maybe it was fate, who knows? He keeps a journal to develop his characters, which is how he created Nate. He wanted Nate Jacobs to have the eyes of Montgomery Clift and the brute force of Brando. He calls Nate his baby. A problem child, but still. He defends his actions and the reasons behind them. Almost all bad actions are circumstantial to a point, I guess. Not long into his career, he gained fame and a huge fan base of screaming girls. Think Leo in the 90s or any boy band. Okay, not that big. But still, The Kissing Booth had two sequels and they kind of changed his life forever. Probably why he hates them. He didn't like that type of attention and went back and hid all his old high school posts. His online presence was something very different now that he had to curate it in a way. He's not just Jacob from Australia, he's Noah from Kissing Booth. I totally get why he would hide. He dated co-star Joey King on Kissing Booth during the first film. They broke up after the film premiered on Netflix. Returning to work after the split was not as hard for them as it was for the fan base. Nothing but attention and constant speculation. In 2020, he was caught taking new girlfriend Kaya Gerber, yes, daughter and twin of Cindy Crawford, out to the same farmer's market as ex Joey King and Zendaya on Zendaya's birthday. Z responded with a selfie, which redirected the attention back to her for a short time. The backlash was so hard that he had to take to Instagram to remind people he was still human. Fans are so petty. That same year, he was also spotted kissing his friend Tommy Dorfman from 13 Reasons Why. Anyways, for a short time, he dated disgraced Nepo baby Olivia Jade. You know the college scandal girl whose mom played Aunt Becky on Full House. This man's lived a life already. Other than the web of mess that is his romantic life, he also has a dog named Layla. Presumably, she's the least replaceable woman in Jacob's life other than his mom, who he's very close with. He's close with his dad too, his whole family really. He often misses his simpler life in Australia with his three older sisters and brother. He's an avid on-set photographer. 
He saw a Heath Ledger documentary told through his own photography and footage. I swear he wants to be him, but I don't blame him. His set photos of Saltburn were amazing. Maybe he'll compile them for his own documentary on his career as it develops. He's been in four films this year already. Priscilla, Saltburn, He Went That Way, and The Sweet East. 2023 was the year he finally became the film actor he aspired to be when he trashed his old work. In 2024, he'll star in On Swift Horses opposite Diego Calva. He'll be in World War II series The Narrow Road to the Deep North, and the films Parallel and O Canada on top of returning for Euphoria. He actually just replaced Andrew Garfield in Netflix's Frankenstein as well. Booked and busy doesn't even begin to cut it for Jacob. Acting takes bravery and goosebumps during intimacy scenes. We saw so much of him before we even learned that he was yet another Aussie with the perfect American accent. He worries about his own objectification in a way that most male actors don't get to express. He doesn't like being fawned over. Can you imagine if I said to a woman, Damn, look at your waist. I would never do that but I think people see it on those screens, so they think it's okay. There is a double standard, and he represents it perfectly. It's a slippery slope to put all your value into your vanity of what your body looks like. Your body is going to deteriorate. Good point. Euphoria and nudity go hand in hand. Luckily, it's been the same cast and crew from day one. He says, like getting naked in front of your family, which is weird. It's always weird. Hi, Jacob. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Your background is jarring. When he reflected upon his career, he pissed a lot of people. <sighs> Look, he came off as pretentious. He hated kissing Booth. He sees it as lowbrow, and now he's making what he considers to be highbrow art and film. That's it. Strangely enough, I've been here for four or five years now, and because of this kind of terrifying new digital age, I've only ever really made things that are on like streamers or on television, and I haven't really made like a, you know, like a, a movie yet. And I think every time I go to the theater, it's hard to not sit there and be like, that's what I, I want to do. Luckily, his range started to blossom on screen in Euphoria as Nate. You need to take a step back. He even gave himself a concussion during a scene where his character confronts his dad, Cal Jacobs. He turned down Superman thinking it was too big, too dark for him at this stage in his career. Shockingly ironic that he thought that was too big because he took on Elvis in Sofia Coppola's Priscilla. Yes, right after Austin Butler played him for Boz Lerman. Of course. There are comparisons. It's Hollywood. Only one didn't hang on to his Elvis voice several years after rapping. He spoke out on the comparisons. I think it would be a killer double feature yeah. um, to have both. I don't know why people uh, make art a blood sport. They turn it into the Coliseum. It's absurd. On Elvis himself, he sees a little boy in him, an arrested development right down to the childish diet and an interest in a high schooler for a love interest. His performance was seen as subdued compared to Austin's. Some thought it was better, some thought it was worse. It was just more man behind the cape than pop star, which is what Jacob's intent was. It wasn't nearly as well received as Austin's Oscar winning Vegas impersonation, but Priscilla Presley herself was very pleased. To Jacob, that's all that mattered. Aside biopics, he really strives for those films that feel emotionally immersive and aren't buried under budget and special effects. Films like Saltburn allow him to do that. Just act. And that bathtub scene? There's a candle made after it called... Jacob Elordi's Bathwater gross. His aristocratic Oxford attending character Felix lets him show a more subtle side to his performances. His character here seems so innocent compared to Nate's conniving abusive nature, not nearly as calculating either. 
Barry Keoghan plays Felix's stalker in his obsessive quest to become what he lusts after until he ultimately destroys him to get it. The chemistry needed to balance this type of sick and twisted film was present on and off screen. A bromance and a fine display of talent. In He Went That Way, he plays Bobby. Partner in crime to Zachary Kinto's gym and a robbery gone wrong. All done with a pet chimp to shake things up. Aesthetically, Sweet East is an art film that looks and plays like one. If you know, you know. Here, Jacob is Ian, a high school kid on a wild adventure through the hidden world of DC. His star is rising right along with his films. He's already getting the SNL host treatment. The sky seems to be the limit for someone traversing it carefully. He seems to touch the sky already in stature and continuously chooses more complex, thoughtfully created characters instead of big action brutes that match his height. And it's working. His projects are looking more and more fascinating, just dramas and grounded films. You know, the types of films he dreamed about when he lived in his car in Hollywood. Anyone with that much passion certainly has more story to tell.